couples, right? And there were three fundamental, important conclusions, which I called concept number one, okay? Which was basically the definition of a couple system and what it means two forces are equal, the magnitude of the direction, that the resultant is zero, and they only function as a moment. So they, there, that a couple system means simply just rotational effect, right? And that is a free moment. We, you know, discussed that, all that, right? So we introduce the concept of free moment that means <coughs> If you have a couple, you can put it anywhere you want on an object. It doesn't make any difference. With basically the function, the action would be exactly the same. Just a rotational action. Concept number two was based on that basic introduction or definition that if you have several couples, right, since each couple is just simply a moment, you can add them up algebraically. You're talking about 2D approach, I mean 2D problems. You can just add them up, considering the algebraic summation. So was the summation of couples. And the most important one, which was really <coughs> what would be the pa uh, paving the road for studying rigid body equilibrium is the concept of Anybody? Equivalent systems. And what did equivalent system says? Or what is the concept of equivalent system? That if you have a force <coughs> acting on an object, anywhere on an object, doesn't matter where, right? You can move it to any arbitrary point that you want. So if it is acting at point A, you can simply move that force to any point. But the penalty you pay for is that you have to add a moment, that magnitude of that moment is the moment that this force makes about this new <coughs> point, that is F times that distance t, and obviously, of course, the direction, you can determine that by rule, right hand rule, or whatever. So you can move this force, put it anywhere you want, and this is the action of this force and this couple is equivalent to the action of this force. So that's called equivalent system. So if you have several forces, and several moments for that matter, you can move all of them to a single point, if you want. Get rid of all these individual forces, replace them by a single force and a single moment. So we're just gonna continue the problem. Uh, I don't think I did a 3D problem last time in this class, did I? I don't think I did. So I'm going to do this 3D problem first, okay? And that is problem 326 in your book, because it's a very easy, good problem. Um, you have a three body, I mean three dimension object that looks like this. Okay. We label these. A, B, C, D, K, E. A couple, and this is of course X, Y, Z. A couple is acting on this object in plane X, Z. That consists of these two forces, 12.5, 12.5 Newton. And then you also have a couple 
that, and of course, these dimensions are all given. Let me give you all these dimensions. This is 0.144 meter. This is um, 0.192 meters. And the this surface, okay, or plane ABCD is also subjected to a couple. These couples act like this, okay? This is point one two meters and point one two meters, okay? These two couples act along these diagonals of this Right, you know, uh, rectangle. So you have a couple force of 50 newton, 50 newton that acts on this plane. So you have basically several, let's put it this way, you have several forces acting on this object that's given, okay? So this is what you have been given several forces acting on a 3D object, and what you want to find, okay, is a single, okay, equivalent moment. Because you can easily see summation of these forces always zero. So there is no force literally acting on this object. It's only pure moments represented by these couples. So in 3D, things is not much different than it is <coughs> in 2D, okay? All you need to do, <coughs> of course, if you didn't know the concept of couple, and you were asked to find basically some of the moments of all these forces. You choose a point, you have to take a moment of each force, add them all up, and then you will realize that, wow, that's gonna be taking forever. It's a long, basically, problem solved. But now you know the concept of couples, you just simply, quickly know, you just have a moment generated by th these two forces, and a moment generated by those two forces. So I'm going to call the moment generated by these two, or as M1, and by these two as M2. So all I need is to find a moment one, moment two, add them up, right? That's it. Let's look at M1. <coughs> okay. M1. M1 represents, or in other words, this couple system represent a moment a free moment that is perpendicular to the plane of action of these two forces, right? And in what direction does it act? You have these couples turning like this, right? So that would be, if you look from the top, is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. clockwise. So in other words, it is acting like this, or it is acting in the negative direction of Y, right? So M1, would be simply 12.5 Newton, right? Times the normal distance between these two, 0.192 J, and it will be negative because it is acting downward. If you simplify that, you will get <coughs> that to be, uh, okay, M1, I have the answer here. That will be 12.5 uh, times that would be, okay. I, okay, I thought I had that, okay. That would be 12, somebody will give me that number, 12.5 times 0.19, negative. If you don't give it to me, I'll have to do it. Okay, so how much is that? How much? 3.48? 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.48. 2.
2.48. Just 2.4. So it would be negative 2.4 J Newton meter, right? How about M2? M2 also forms a couple. So the moment resulting from this couple is what? Perpendicular to the plane of action of these two, right? So if you look from this angle, if I'm looking at this plane from this angle, which will look like something like this, right? This is B and A. This is D and C, or this is Y, and this is Z axis. The couple that is acting perpendicular to this or perpendicular to this line, if you look at it from this angle, in what direction would that be? <coughs> outward, right? Perpendicular to this plane and outward. In other words, would be something like this. And I remember we, I said last time that to differentiate between a moment and a force, we represent a moment, which is of course a vector, with a double headed <coughs> arrow, okay? So this would be M2. What is the magnitude of M2? Obviously, it's the force times the distance, the vertical distance between the two. So if I call this, let's say, F and N, right? <coughs> this is the vertical distance, right, between these two. So if you look at just that triangle, in other words, if this is B, and F, okay, right? This would be 50 times H. And in what direction? That would be in the direction that's shown, right? <coughs> so how do you find H? It's not too difficult, right? Because you have this side is given. Oops, did I give that side? No, maybe I didn't. Okay. This dimension is given as 0.16. So you have this is 0.16. This is 0.12. So all you need is this angle alpha. So tangent of alpha is 0.12 over 0.16. That will give you alpha. What would be alpha? Anybody can quickly give it to me. Our tangent of alpha is 6 over 8 or 3 fourth. The arc tangent of 3 fourth or 0.75. What would that be? 36.9. 36.9. Thank you. So if that's alpha, H would be. 0.16 times sine of 36.9, which would be what? Could you give me that now to me? So H is 0.16 times <coughs> sine of 0 0.096. 0 0.096, thank you. So the magnitude of M2, okay, is 0 0.096 times 50, right? So it would be 4.9, no, 4.8, right? Am I right? Because 100 would be like 4. Yeah. Point, I think it would be 4.8. Okay? Newton meter. But that's not going to do me any good because I want to add up these moments. So what I will do, I will resolve this into its components along y and uh, z, right? And this would be m to z. <coughs> this is m to uh, y, okay? But in order to do that, I do need this angle, which is this angle, angle beta. And this is angle beta. In this triangle, I can easily find angle beta because I have, again, 
this, which is 0.144. I have this, which is 0.192. So tangent of beta is 0.192 divided by 0.144. If you solve that, beta comes out to be 53.1 degrees. Okay, so if that's beta, then M2, Z, which is this, would be M2, 4.A, cosine of beta, and M2, Y, would be 4.A sine of beta. If you substitute for those, I have those values, okay, Y would be 2.8, so this comes out to be 2.8 Newton meter, and this results as 3.84 Newton meter. Both of them are positive, because this is along the direction of, positive direction of y, this is positive direction of z. This one was in the negative direction of y. So the total moment is the sum of all these vectors, right? So m, which is the moment you want, is m1 plus m2. So you just add this vector, okay? This vector and this vector m2, which has these two components. This is the k component. And this is the J component. So negative 2.4 plus 2.4, right? So M would become point negative 0.4, right? Just negative, or point, just uh, 0.4, right? Uh, was it 4.8? 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, yeah. So that will be 2.8. Uh, 4, 2 uh, so it would be 0.4J plus... 3.84k, so that is the moment. So this is the single moment that will replace do all those forces, <coughs> all those couples. And it's an equivalent to what you have there. Yes? How did you know that that was beta? Uh, which one? Oh, I you see, was, you was here? Same, yeah. If this is beta, do you remember from... Uh, Geometry, if you have two angles like this, right? And another angle that its sides is perpendicular to the two sides of the original angle, <clears throat> mutually perpendicular, then if this is beta, this is also beta from okay. geometry. So. This and this are perpendicular, and this and this side are perpendicular, this angle and that angle will be. Another way, of course, there's another way you can also find that out, maybe which, depending on which approach you prefer. If that is beta, right, this is what? Uh, yeah. <coughs> How much would that be? What is? 180, right? This would be 90 minus beta. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? So this is 90 minus beta, right? This is not, this whole thing is 180. Okay. This is 90. So it would be 180 minus 90. In other words, it would be you have 180 minus 90 minus beta, which is beta. Okay, cool. Right. Okay, 90 minus beta. But anyway, so that's basically how you remember from geometry. Any question? Yes? Why isn't there a moment in the extraction for a moment too? Why is it? Why isn't there a moment for the extraction for a moment? Because the moment that resolves from here, right, is acting perpendicular to this direction, right? Um, so it has no component about, it only has a, in other words, think of this vector. This vector 
has only components about y and z. There is no component in that direction. Any other questions? Let me do more problems. Okay, I have chosen quite a few problems here, all good ones. So let me do this one. Okay. Okay. So we are going to focus on the concept of equivalent systems. Actually, maybe I have so many good problems that I have put here. Let's see which one is the better one in terms of more generalized concepts that I want to discuss. By the way, I sent you, you must have seen it by now, right? Another set of example problems. Did you get that? Yeah, make sure you review those. Those are good for you. They're good for you, for your brain, for your exams, for everything. Okay. So, <coughs> so the problem that I want to do is this. You have a structure that is just a lever of some sort, supported here. Um, let me first write these dimensions. <coughs> this part is 0.6 meter. This length is 0 0.45, 0 0.45 meters. Okay, A, B, C. We have three forces that are acting on this structure. And these are the three forces. You have a force of 216, okay? This is 216 Newton force that is acting at an angle of 55 degrees from, um, that's not vertical, because that, that may be actually misleading. It's just from the line that is normal to this, it is acting at 55 degrees with respect to that line, okay? Then you have two other forces. One is acting at a 20 degree from this at line or the axis, and this force is 90 Newton, and yet, another force that is acting also that is also 90 degrees and also makes an angle of 20 degrees with the with vertical line or line vertical to this object so this is given okay so this is given what you have been asked is actually problem consists of two parts. Part one, the problem is asking you replace all forces with an equivalent system. System at B. So when you're asked to find an equivalent, there's another part, we'll get to that. But when you're asked to find an equivalent system at D, that means move everything that you have to point B. And remember how you did it. 
when you move a force from its point of action to another location, you just simply move it the same direction, same orientation, just put it at that new point, but you need to add a moment that is equal to the moment that that force makes with respect to that point. Or in other words, vertical distance from that point to the force, right, times the force, okay? So that's what we'll do. So let's, for, let's start with each force. I'm going to start with this force first. So what I will do, I will just move this force to this point here. But by doing that, what do I need to do? I need to also add a moment and that moment would be the moment that this force is making about this point B. How do I find that? Since it's a 2D problem, you need to find the vertical distance from here to here and multiply that by that force, right? But do you remember, there's an easier way of doing it. And who should you appreciate? Do you remember? That famous saint, do not forget those good people yeah, who were saints. So what was the name? Saint Verignon. So do not ever forget him, okay? So what I will do, instead of dealing with this force as is, I'm going to establish a coordinate system, in fact, which will be like this. And I have a reason for doing it. Because you can set up your coordinate system any which way you want. You can set it up like that. This is easier. Why? <coughs> because I will resolve that force into its components. So you have this force, which is the x component. So that is 216, right, sine of 55 and the y component of this force, which would be 216 cosine of 55. So I replace that force with this component, right? That's what Mr. St. Vergon said. You can always replace the force with its components because the action of the force, whatever it is, whether there's moment, resultant, doesn't matter, is the same as the action of the components combined. And in this case, the action of the components, that means is to find the moment of this force about that point. I find the moment of this force about that point and this force about that point. And now you see, by setting up the coordinate system like that, the action of this force about this point, or the moment of this force about that point is what? Zero, yes because the force is going through that point. So there is no vertical distance from here to the line of action of that force. It's a zero distance. So all you need to do then, a moment of 216 Newton about point B, which is what you want to find, right, is simply only the moment of this force about point B. And you already have the vertical distance, point 45. So it would be point, 45 meter times this, or 216 cosine of 55 degrees. And what direction does it act? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Anybody? Counterclockwise. So that would be positive. So that would be Newton meter. So that's that moment. So you just simply put that force there, right? Get rid of that force, put it there, but you need to add also this moment there, right? A moment of, and that is gonna come out to be, I don't have the answer to that, okay? 55.75. How much? 55.75. Thank you so much, 55. 0.75 Newton meters. 
So I will add that counterclockwise here. 55.75 Newton meters. But I also want to move these forces, put them there. But before I go any step further, I pay attention and I realize that, wait a minute, these forces are not forces. They only form a couple. So their summation is useless. All I need to do is just find the moment that results from the action of these couples, right? <coughs> Again, to find a moment of these couples, I need to have the vertical distance between these two which again is not easy, right, to find that vertical distance. But again, thanks to who? Saint Verignon. Don't forget that great saint. I would resolve this into its components. I would resolve this to its components, right? So this one is 90 cosine 20. This is 90 sine 20. So 90 sine 20 and 90 cosine 20. And I need to find the moment of each component and add them up. <coughs> Luckily again, these two components they're along the same line, so they don't generate any moment. So it's only the moment of these two. And what direction do they turn? Clockwise. So moment of 90 Newton couple would be simply 90 cosine of 20, uh, 20, not 25. Where did I come up with 25 times 20? <coughs> Okay, cosine of 20, right, times this distance, which is 0.65, no, 0.6 plus 0.45, and it is clockwise, so this will be negative, right? So how much would that be? This is 1.05, so if you could quickly give me that, 90 times cosine of 20 <coughs> times uh, 1.05, you were quick, right? I'm gonna put pressure on you now, yeah, right? Yeah. Still ready. See, you did it once, you have to do, you know. 88.8. 88.8, great, thank you. Or negative. Negative, right, that's right. Perfect. So, what would be the moment? So I need to also put that here, but this is clockwise, 88. Point A. So these two moments add up. So what is the total? If I say that is also 8, right? So it would be 50, 80, uh, 8 minus 55, so it would be 23, right? So, uh, no, I'm sorry, 33. So the total would be negative 33, or basically a moment of this much. So what that means then is what? I can simply move everything that I have, <coughs> put it at point B. I have replaced the original system, right, with this. This is 55 degrees, 260 Newton, and I have a moment of 33 Newton meter. This is equivalent to what I had here, which was this force, this force, and this force. These two systems would do exactly the same thing to this object. That's why we call them equivalent systems. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Um, <clears throat> when you move the 260 Newton force, mm -hmm. does it have to stay parallel or could you change it? It should be exactly in the same direction, same basic parallel to it, and the same direction. You just simply move it, put it there. Good question. Any other questions? Yes. Why is the 260 the one that stays in the final? 
uh, because that's really the only force that you have acting on this system. The other two, they seem to be forces, but they're not. They just <coughs> are a couple. So their sum is zero. So you move all these forces, right? But in reality, you have, you have one force. Yeah. I'm having a hard time like, figuring out how it's like counterclockwise or clockwise. OK. I think the easiest way, I promise you this is the easiest way, OK? Whether you have a force, you want to take the moment of that force about a point, or you have a couple, doesn't matter. The way to do it, always imagine in this case, you have a link connects that point to this force. There's a rigid link pinned here and pinned here. When you move that force, what direction that link edge is going to rotate? Clockwise. Clockwise. So there's another one. Create a link between these two. Clockwise. Clockwise again, right? So if you had a couple that was like this, that would kind of yeah. That I find it easier. Yeah. Right, yes. How does for that, uh, the middle force there, how does that go counterclockwise with that? This one? System? Yeah. Oh, this one was the result of the moment of this 216, which ended up to be actually its components. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. So is the moment of this force about point oh right? So it is this example. You have the moment of this force 216 about point oh, oh. right? So connect it with a link, so it's gonna rotate that way. That's the y axis. Correct. Yes. So why did the x component get canceled out in the 216 one Two sixteen, the reason it cancelled out is this. See? This was the x axis, right? So this is the x component, this is the y component, and you want to take the moment about point B, right? Uh -huh. This one has a moment, because the, what, how do you find a moment? Draw a line <coughs> from this point perpendicular to the direction of the force, right? So this is the line perpendicular to the direction of this force, right? Yeah. How do you draw a line from B to perpendicular to this. There is no distance between them. So distance, or that distance, vertical distance is zero. You have to let the vertical distance empty. Direct, okay. Exactly. So when there is no distance between the point and the force, that means any time that force goes through a point, always the moment of that force about that point is zero. Any other questions? There's a second part to this problem. The second part is asking this. Determine a single force that is equivalent to the force couple obtained in part A and specify the point of action of that force. It's an interesting problem. <coughs> so it's kind of an inverse problem, you can say that. But again, is an equivalent system problem. So this is what we are now dealing with, or we've been asked to do. So now we have this problem. So this is part B. And this is what the problem is asking you. We have a force of 216 <coughs> okay, Newton acting at 55 degrees here. And we have a couple of 33 Newton meter. So the problem is asking, can you find a point along this line? Okay, this is B. Where I can find an equivalent system that consists of only a single force. That's what the problem is asking, right? That's exactly what the problem states. It says, okay, the single equivalent force that basically does not have any moment. Determine the single force that is equivalent to the force couple system obtained in uh, this uh, part, okay? So I don't know where that 
force is, let's say this force is here. In other words, let's say we can find a point at distance x, okay? And this is the force. In other words, you have just simply moved everything here, and that equivalent system is only a force, does not have a, a moment. What does that mean? Can anybody think about how that works out? Okay. That means, okay, okay, if I take a moment about this point, right, sum of all moments about this point has to be zero, right? So I can find that this is x, right? Because if there is no moment, there's only a single force here. If I take summation of moments of everything that I have here, right, that moment has to be zero. That's basically all that matters. Or vice versa. If I take summation of moments about this point, right, since there's only a single force here, right, that is acting, if I take summation of all moments about B, okay? In other words, imagine you move all the forces here, right? And you don't have it, you don't end up <coughs> with a moment. So what that means, summation of all moments at this point, or at this point, doesn't matter, whatever, it would be zero, because there is no moment here. They only have a single force. So if the summation of moments about point B is equal to zero, obviously this force doesn't make a moment about point B. So what do we have? We just have this negative 33 Newton meter, right? I don't know what this angle is, but I know that if I can, I need, I can resolve this, I can always resolve this into these components. So, I have basically moment of all these forces about point B would be what? This doesn't generate the moment here, so I only have F sine of alpha, right? So I have basically it's going that way, so it would be negative F sine alpha is equal to zero, right? Summation of all moments will be zero, okay? I also know Right? Since these two systems are the same, summation of forces would be also equal. Yes? Are you trying to get it so that you're adding, like basically creating a new force that has the same like magnitude? Doesn't have the same magnitude. I don't know the magnitude of that force, but all I know is I have, I want to move this system to a point such that I only end up with one force. I don't know what the direction of that force is. I don't know what the magnitude of that force is. But when I move this to a point, what I have here, which is equivalent to that, is only a force, right? So this system and that system are equal, equivalent. That means some of the moments of everything that I have, but any point is zero, and some of the forces is also the same. So in other words, some of the moment is zero about any point, right? Because this system, the two are the same, or the moment of this system and this system about any point is the same. So I consider point B. And also summation of forces should be zero, okay? So if the summation of forces is going to be also zero, or the same. If I take summation of forces along x, okay, and summation of forces along <coughs> y, 
and equate them to, to be the same, I have two unknowns and two equations so I can find that force. Okay? The e, another, in this particular case, of course, it's easier probably if I use a vector algebra. Okay? So that's basically uh, what I have. Okay? So that's sort of a different way of expressing the same concept. But let me do some more interesting problems. So that's really just a simple algebra. Let me do a more interesting uh, uh, problem here. Okay. All right. I've got some really good problems here too. A lot of good problems here. There is a problem in your book which actually consists of several problems. I think that is, in fact, one of these homework problems. Problem 101. You have a uh, beam. <laughs> which is given like this. And there's different uh, Cases. Let's say you have a load here, 300 meters, and this is uh, the length of this beam is given. This is three meters, okay, and this is 200 newton, and then a moment is acting at 400 newton meter. Okay. You want to replace, let's say, this system each with an equivalent force coupled at point A. Okay. And there are several cases actually here. That is one case. This is another case. So this problem actually consists of eight different cases. So it's a good practice to show you the concept of equivalent system. So let's say you want to move everything to point A. That's, I'm going to do two of these cases, case A and case B. Let's say you have a beam like this that is loaded by two vertical force <coughs> and a couple that is acting here, you don't like that. You want to move everything to point A. So basically, you want to find an equivalent system at A, right? So what do you do? You just simply move all forces to point A. So in this case, you only have two forces vertically downward, right? So all you have to do is what? Add these up, right? Because you already have this. You move this to that. So you end up with a force of 500 Newton, right? This is a free moment. So it doesn't matter where you put it. So these two are equivalent. In other words, if you have a beam which is loaded like this, you have two concentrated loads downward acting at the two ends of the beam, you can move this force, put it there, as long as you do what? As you move this over there, you need to also add the moment that this force causes about that point A. So you need to also consider the moment that this force generates about A, which obviously would be also about counterclockwise, right? So that would be another moment. This moment would be 200 times 3 meters. So that would be 600 Newton meter. So the equivalent would be 1,000 Newton meter plus 500 Newton. So that's the equivalent system to what you have here. Same thing here. 
If you want to move everything to point A, right, you can just simply move that 400 here, because that's a free moment, right? <coughs> move that home power through here, so you have that 500 Newton, but you, all, you need to consider the moment that this generates about here, and that would be also what? That would be in this direction, and would be 300 times three, 900 Newton meter, right? This way, 400 Newton that way, so the total would be 500 Newton meter this way, right? So that would be the equivalent of these two systems. Remember, when you move a force, just move it at the moment that it causes about that point as a result of that. Okay? More problems on Monday.